Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 235 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, March the 20th. First day of spring. Happy first day of spring. It's a glorious day to be alive, I must say. Beautiful day in hashtag Barry. (laughs) It really has been just amazing. It was like summer today. It was gorgeous. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's enough about the weather. (laughs) How you doing? I'm just wonderful. I'm just keeping it real. Excellent. We've got a lot of fun stuff coming up for you. We got some viewer postcards this week. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking a little bit more about PHP. Lots of awesome comments and questions have come in on the uh, Cat5 email, live at category5.tv. What else have we got coming up? Also, we've got some news. Excellent. Now, there is a lot happening in the world of news. Your free mobile apps may be consuming your battery power. An Ubuntu-based Linux distro raised some serious concern over its claimed affiliation with the anonymous hacker group. Also, Apple plans to buy back some of its shares from shareholders. And lastly, the current land speed record holder plans to achieve 1,000 miles per hour by car. Stick around because these stories are coming up later on in the show. Hmm. How interesting that could be. Like, I've heard of people who (laughs) bought when Apple stocks were super, super low, right? Who knows? Pretty wild stuff, I tell you. More money, more money, more money. (laughs) So yeah, lots going on in this show. Yeah, join us in the chat room. Uh, It's Category 5 on Freenode, or if you go to our website, category5.tv, and you'll see the the live chat room is available there for you. So tonight we have, we're experiencing for the first time, very new setup. Mm Mm-hmm. Lots going on. I got a new camera. So, I mean, I don't know if you're watching Backstage Pass here, but if you are, you see a couple of different things here that are that are new, and we're Mm -hmm. going to be presenting them to you next week. But just so you know. uh, Now you. Ah. Excellent. (laughs) We've finally introduced the LifeCam Studio cameras. 1080p, my friends. Pretty sweet. And if that interests you, next week we're going to show you how you can get Wirecast up and running with these cameras. That's very cool. Very cool. I'm very excited. But it also means that tonight, <laughs> for the you know, like this, uh, since we installed the new server, there was the, those few weeks afterwards where there's the potential that something could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Now we've got all new cameras, all new capture devices. Something could go wrong. <laughs> I'm hoping not. I'm hoping Robbie covered all the bases. That's what I'm here to do. So bear with right us on. if. But do uh, private message me in the chat room if something goes on because this is a live show. It's uh, it'd be awesome if you could help us out by letting us know for sure nice to see everybody in the chat room by the way mm-hmm. people in the chat room representing the world wide web from around the world that's go it. figure and do you know what else is cool about around the world robbie what is it is our map of the world and corresponding postcards definitely that's come from various countries and locations from around the world we got a couple this week we do i'm pretty excited i shall go first <laughs> look at this bad boy Coming to us from Melbourne, Australia. All right. Good day, Robbie and Co. Here's a custom postcard that I put together. Good work on the show. Really? Um, keep it up and keep on with the awesome improvements. I'm sure that the show will stay awesome and that Linux will too. Good to see some fresh hints, as always. And I always learn something new, even if I have to put up with the occasional mispronunciations. But that's what a worldwide community has to cope with, and it ain't the end of the world. <laughs> so this is from Pyros Rock. We'll just we'll, we'll blame it on the uh, on the Canadianisms. Canadian accent, eh? Pyrus Rock, thank you so much for sending us the postcard. That looks Pretty great. Sweet. Look at he that. He typed up the message. He made this. Look gathered all those photos. And if you'd like to see it, you know, on your screen, then you can actually, when uh, the new website launches, mm-hmm. these are all being scanned and they're being positioned. So now we've got a pin right on Melbourne, Australia. Pretty cool. cool. What else have we got here? Looks like another custom one. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, please. Okay. Coming to us from Scott Depot, West Virginia. Nice. 
on the front, there's a little caption here that says the old train depot. And this is a custom made one. Yeah. And the caption on the back says Scott Depot is an unincorporated community in Putnam County, West Virginia, United States. It is located along Crooked Creek and downstream from the creek's intersection with Teas Valley Road. The zip code is 25560. It is a part of the census designated Tays Valley. The valley referred to by the I think I'm saying that right. Tays Valley is a portion um, of the remains of the pre-glacial Tays River, which emptied westward into the Mississippi River drainage basin. So that's interesting. And then the message yeah. reads to us, Robbie and all, dropping this handmade card to you to tell you about my little part of the world. Thanks for all your shows. They are wonderful. Uh, time vaults of information and education of our OS of choice, Linux. God bless Doug, who is a oh, Rev... I forget his name in the chat room. It, it's hard to see here, it's Doug, because the the, uh, the postal code stamp went over top of your, your name. name I'm here. sorry. Rev D. Oh, it's uh, Jenkins, Reverend uh, Jenkins. Oh. Is it D? Thank sorry, you. Dude. Are you in the chat room joining? We're us? sorry. Thank but you so much for the postcard from you. West Virginia. Very cool, and awesome. I I really appreciate the homemade touch. Anyone could really go do. buy one, but no. And sometimes it's they not possible them. to find one for your hometown. For your little if you're town, yeah. In a little town, right? So that's that's a very creative and awesome way to send us a, a little it. bit of information. And that one had a little bit of a, a historical kind of background of the town yeah. as well. So very very cool. Thank uh, we you. would love to receive your postcard. All you have to do is mail it to us. Yeah, that's right, mail. Takes a while to get here. These ones were uh, sent to us in 1976. They just arrived this week. <laughs> uh, Category 5 Technology TV. We're at Postal Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. Hey, just a note that if you are using a mobile device, we have our mobile site and we have a new short URL because we listen to the people. <laughs> and the people said, As mobile.category5.tv is too long to type in with my thumbs. So hmm. m.cat5.tv. That works. We really couldn't get much shorter than that within <laughs> the $10,000 budget that we had for the domain. Psh, that's <laughs> the way that you want to get there. So, Or you can scan that QR code. That's kind of awesome as well. So, yeah. Get there. That is the mobile site. It'll work on your mobile device, give you some access to on demand and quite potentially live as well. Very cool. Always Excellent. making things user friendly, Robbie. Well, we do our best. I like that. <laughs> Speaking of user friendly, I've been working, I mean, the, the beta team knows yes, that yes. I've been working very, very hard, diligently on our new website, which is coming out this year. Have you had a chance to see it yet? It's it's still it's not available to the public, so to some people do have access people? to it. Yeah, the I may top have seen people. a little something. You saw something. a little something, something. All right. <laughs> In my quest to spend every waking moment working <laughs> on the brand new website, and you know, Emil is joining us in the chat room, who has access to that site, is one of the beta testers. Says, "Oh, it's looking great every day. It gets better and better." But one of the things that happens sometimes, if I'm not paying attention, is that some of the stuff that you do see gets forgotten or broken and I don't know because mm. I'm not actively working on the current website. So this week we had our ask a question page oh, okay. kind of broke unbeknownst mm. to me and we didn't realize it. I didn't realize it in time for some of your viewer questions to come through. So if you filled in that form, the ask a question form at cat5.tv slash ask, within about the last week or two, or if you have sent in a question by that form and you are sitting there going, why haven't they answered my question? I profusely apologize. <laughs> I really felt bad when I realized, oh my goodness, this isn't sending out the mail. Oh no. And as a programmer, I should be on top of that kind of stuff, right? But I'm working so hard on the brand new website. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about that. But please resend your question. We always, I mean, we always try to get your questions sure, on there. For sure, definitely. So if for some reason your question did not get through, most likely I'll just need you to resend it, okay? So. And that would be great. And thank you so much for understanding. But I tell you what, I'm going to put a lot of focus on the ask a question <laughs> uh, on, the, on the V3 website for sure. <laughs> Which is a good thing because we always have lots of questions to answer. Always and do. I have a bunch here if you're if you're ready and willing. Well, we'll hit, we'll hit that in just a moment. I got a couple more things that we do need to cover before. Uh, one of the things that we had talked about, we did receive a viewer testimonial. <gasps> we this did. Week. We did. And just while we still have a few moments, I'll I'll ask you to to read that. It comes to us Certainly. from Fabian. Fabian, thank you very thank much. Thank you for, for the writing to us. We love hearing from you. 
Hi, Category 5 team. I just stumbled across one of your episodes while playing around with my Play On Mini 2's online programs. I have to say that it has been quite a while since I enjoyed um, an on-screen program that much. Awesome. Keep up the good work. Best regards from Fabian. Thank you, Fabian. Yes. Category 5 will be right back after this. And uh, don't go away. We're going to be learning a lot about PHP tonight. We're going to learn how to count with PHP, which may not sound like a whole lot because we've got 10 fingers <laughs> and we can, we can do that. But it's going to put you uh, it's going to put you in charge of PH, PHP moving forward. We're going to learn a lot of cool stuff over the, the course of this series that we're doing. So stick around, uh, and your viewer questions are coming up after this. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. My name is Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble, here in the co-host seat, asking the tough questions, and trying to, to get the you. answers. And it's so good to it's see good you. It's good to be here. I love being here. It's always a hoot and a holler, a laugh and a half, a good time, had by all. I would say. <laughs> would you like to quote me on that? Are you going to hashtag Hillary on the internet? I think it'll happen. Possibly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yep. And I'm ready to roll. Are All you? right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that statement was in the form of a question, or question was in a form of a statement. I'll let you use your new camera. That's nice and fancy. Woo. All right. Got us a question here. Hi, Robbie. What happened Hi. to the nine-hour unboxing video for the new server? I volunteer to edit it. You can upload it to an accessible whoops, location. Then I will download and... Sorry, I will download, edit, and unload back, upload back for your approval. Sorry, my email got a little funky. Basically, he's volunteering to edit the nine-hour unboxing cool. video. That's pretty sweet. If you don't like my edit, you can give me some pointers on what went wrong, and then I can rectify it. Or at least um, I will have gotten the unboxing video. That way he has footage of it. That's pretty funny. Warm regards, 32 degrees Celsius, from Kevin, a.k.a. Kevo, Kevo. in the chat room. Yeah, hey, thank you so very much for the offer. Um, and, uh, what, well, basically what has happened with that nine-hour video. It is compiled. It's being worked on. And what's going to be happening is uh, it's actually going to be released in many segments. Um, so we're, we're still working that out. Um, I, I would I'd be totally open to talking to you about, uh, about your, your offer to volunteer for the show. Um, I guess it would just be figuring out, you know, what, uh, what kind of technology you're, you're using and, and how you want to take that and make it a part of, uh, of the show. We, we are, of course, a voluntary organization here at Category 5. Everybody here is a volunteer, and uh, it really does help a lot when mm -hmm. people pitch in here or there. Um, sure. Maybe right off the bat, it's it's like okay, well, you know, how can you volunteer? But uh, there's an opportunity for you, Kevo. Maybe we'll uh, you know pop me another email. Let's get in touch. Yeah. Uh, give us a call. The phone number here is two five four five cat five TV. If you're able to make a phone call, or of course you can uh, you can pop us an email live at category five TV. But let's uh, let's talk about it. But I'll I'll fill you in, Kevo, a little bit about what's happening with that video. Is mm -hmm. that it is being edited down, but it's a process because there are so many other things going on here at Category 5 right now. Mm. Um, that's going to be an amazing feature, but it is, uh, it's, it's, it's coming, but we're, we're pretty booked up uh, as far as the next couple of months go. Plus, this year is our fifth anniversary party. Yes, so yes, yes. So everything's kind of co uh, coming together for that. And uh, so not to, not to spill the beans, so to speak, <laughs> too early. But just know that that's coming and that things are being worked on. So, uh, mm. and of course, the feature is, is coming as well for the uh, for the the video of the server build. Cool. All right, sounds good to Thanks me. Thanks so much for contacting us and your question. Mm-hmm. And I actually have another question awesome. right here. Comes to us from Philip, aka Phil. Hey, Phil. Hello, Robbie. I want to say thank you for the show, Category Five. You have helped me out a lot with learning Linux and Ubuntu distro and with various other workings of the operating system. I might add that you even helped me with a problem that I had in the beginning via way of email that Miss Wells read over the air. 
Cool. I was so very blown away at how quickly you responded to that. However, the solution you advised me of for that problem didn't work, and I did oh lose no. my data. But oh no. it was all good because I was moving um, onto the newer 9 version of Ubuntu, which was coming up a we few had, days after We had the health. disclaimer on the video at that point, right? <laughs> That's the disclaimer at the end yeah. of the show that says, you know, this, this is all just theoretical and, you know, if you do it and lose everything. But what do I always say? Back up, back up, back up, because you should never lose any data if you have a good backup. It's true. So we're sorry for that. <laughs> but yes. But we're always learning things here on the show. Um, so what does he say? Oh, so he's moving on to the newer version of Ubuntu and it okay. came out a few days after he helped. So it's no big deal. I watch the show every Wednesday after 1 p.m. or later many times. I haven't been in the chat room yet as I need to come up with a name and a password for myself because I am a one finger typer. I wish mm. I could type as well as you and other people that I know. I want to ask you if at some point you would demonstrate for those like myself who are uh, install or sorry, how to install software that um, that is in the a software dot BZ two uh, type of format. I sometimes BZ2. Fi- okay. Okay, BZ two. I sometimes find that Linux software that has been released for Ubuntu, but not always in a Debian type package, but it's t- um, as you know, in Windows, if it is zipped, you unzip it to find the setup or install program, and it's done. Mm-hmm. It seems that in Linux, for many of those uh, tar files that you have to configure, make and install to get the program. I tried to do this myself a few good times, but it's not happening for me yet. So I'm asking you for your assistance when you're able to. I intend on copying this event. If you find you can do it, please let me know if you're able to do so. Um, just a little mm-hmm. bit more. I am retired. Sure. I live in Beltsville, Maryland. Um, Oh, and he thinks he's going to make um, his sign in name as Phil with two L's. Um, cool. And he's saying, we'll watch, watch out for me. Oh, he's saying, watch out for me. I probably <laughs> won't say very much because I'm a little introverted. If this request That's is a little right. too much, um, let me know what you can do. But anyways, basically, he goes on later to say that he appreciates everything we do on Category 5. And please tell your co-host and everyone else that I enjoy what they bring to the show. Hillary, he enjoys what you bring to the show. <gasps> Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Very nice, um, and, and we appreciate you being here. And, and I just encourage you, you know, join in the chat room, even if mm-hmm. you uh, you can't type very fast. That's okay. It's fun to read. It's fun to read. Yeah, it's for sure. It's a lot sure. of fun to watch what's going on in the chat room because <laughs> then you really get a sense for what is happening, uh, the questions and the mm-hmm. comments that are being bounced around. It adds a, a whole new dimension to the show. I think when you're watching live. Yes. If you're watching this after the fact, though, as you are, then. In that case, you can actually click on our IRC logs, and and then you can read over in in pretty much sync because you know that five minutes into the seven o'clock hour is actually five minutes into the show because the mm-hmm. show starts at seven. So it's pretty easy to follow along and figure out where where the chat room is taking you know where those comments are taking place. Mm-hmm. That's As for the question about BZ2 files and and compressed archives and installers in Linux. Linux has gotten really, really good at, ins- at, at making it easy for you to install stuff. You use Windows as the example where you just open the setup.exe file. Well, these days with Linux, quite often you don't need to do anything other than just bring up Synaptic Package Manager or, as you say, you're, you're going to be <coughs> pardon me, running the newest version of Ubuntu, so uh, you might use Ubuntu Software Center. It's a really nice way to install software. I don't have... I may have Software Center installed on this. I'm using uh, an operating system, a distribution called Zorin OS, which is based on Ubuntu. So I may actually have Ubuntu Software Center in here. Let's see. I am unsure. However, I know for a fact that I do have Synaptic Package Manager. So I'm going to bring that up for you just so that you know how things work a little bit differently in Linux. Because you're, you're downloading a, a BZ2 file, which is a, basically the equivalent of a zip file, say, for example, okay? It's a compressed file that you extract, and then there's going to be, like, you know, a make file, and then you have to go through the make install, and that's where, that's kind of, I, I, I would say, the old way of doing it, in that uh, it, it can be a lot easier than that these days. So in Synaptic Package Manager, here we are. I don't know what to search for, but, uh, you know, let's say uh, my kids like Tux, so let's see what comes up when I type Tux. And you can see that the kids have used my computer because most of them are already installed. Here's Mm -hmm. Tux Puck as a game for kids, okay? So it's pretty neat, and here's what I can do is having searched for that program, I can just click on that and go mark for installation. 
okay? And then when I apply that up at the top here, it's going to automatically download that off the web. It's going to automatically install it on my computer, com decompress it and build it on my computer and make it work and add it to the menu and sort it into the games category. It's very organized. So I show you that because whatever program it is that you're downloading in a BZ2 format, I'd encourage you before you even attempt it, get into Synaptic Package Manager, do a quick search for the file name for the, the program and see if it exists. Because you can go to a website uh, or you can find an application and you can say, wow, that sounds really cool for my Linux computer. And you'd go through the whole process of having to compile it manually and go through all that and decompressing the BZ2 file or the tar.gz. And it can be a little bit of a hassle. Sometimes it doesn't always work. Or you could search in Synaptic Package Manager and, oh, look at that. It's already in Synaptic. It's in one of the repositories. So I can just install it just like that. So you may find stuff online. You can use this to, uh, to actually install it. One thing to mention here, Phil, is to go into Settings and Repositories. And you'll see that I have some turned on that, uh, that you may not. Restricted, Multiverse, Universe. See how those are checked off? If those are turned off like that, I'm not going to have access to things that are in universe or restricted. So what that is, is it's a repository. It's a place where Ubuntu can get programs from to install. Universe is like extra apps. Restricted is like stuff that would be considered maybe not free, like codecs and the ability to play MP3 files and things like that. So I'm getting used to the camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. So I hope that helps. But I, again, I encourage you, use Synaptic. Do a search for the software that you're trying to install by a, 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 an uh, a archive. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, see if it's in there. And if not, throw me an email and uh, attach maybe the, the BZ2 file that mm -hmm. is in question. Or send me a link to it. And we'll take a look directly at that one specific program. Cool? Sweet. Good luck. Let me know. Sounds good to me. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate all the comments as well. Mm -hmm. It's nice to hear from people. Actually, in the chat room, sometimes people post questions as we're, we're chatting along, discussing things. Mm -hmm. And I have a question here from Gadget Wisdom Guru. May I, just because it's, just because it's in, in line with what Phil was saying, Agamotto was just saying that oh. he's sad that, uh, but fortunately, make usually works for them. Hmm. And I'll just say that, um, that 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 is usually the case for users that are you know at this level, but when when you're a fairly novice user, I think Synaptic is a great way to learn to install programs because it's so easy yeah. for the novice user. I think it's a good way to get into Linux and to to not be afraid of installing applications. So that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Very cool, and that's why we love the chat room. Everyone's always got such interesting tidbits or feedback or we try to keep up yeah. see how it happens like you're looking at one thing i know i'm, I'm like there's like lots of stuff so it's like on. go 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 um sorry okay so, so a gadget wisdom guru yes. or gwg yes another question coming nice to see you by the way saying gwg hasn't uh, been able yeah, to join where, us where you been mister where are you been hiding great to see you <laughs> um dear robbie i have a small uh, um sorry a torn system adam system I can't read. <laughs> Adam system that I formerly used for audio production. I'm looking for new ideas for projects to do with this system. Do you have any ideas? Do you? It's an old audio ad like is it a tablet or is it a small Adam system? Or is it a netbook or what is it? Be interested to know. It's so bizarre. If you're are you what else you got to say? Where are you? Come on. Speak. Speak. Mm -hmm. Wow. Adam based HTPC. Oh, an HTPC. Like? So that's like a, a set top box or something to, that you could use to create a nice multimedia server. And GWG takes a bow. Hello. <laughs> um, I don't know what to suggest. If it's a set top kind of device, then sure, maybe uh, maybe turn it into a multimedia center that. Uh, that would allow you to stream video from your server or your your main computer. Get a Pogo plug and uh, and install the Pogo plug software so that you can feed your your files directly to that. Really depends on what you want to do, right? Mini desktop size system, something that you can stick on a uh, a bookshelf. He says something you could put above the TV is what I'm thinking. Hmm. Um, 
in in our case in in my home we just have a crt tv i don't have an hd tv so in my case i've taken the d sub output the vga output the nine pin and converted that over to s video and composite and that just goes into the the surround sound kind of uh display system and we're able to watch whatever shows or whatever online through Miro Internet That's TV. That's cool. And they just download them whenever there are new episodes. And all, all of a sudden, you know, we sit mm. down and we can uh, use a wireless keyboard to control that particular computer that comes up on our TV. So that's a cool way to use it, I think. Yeah. And it gives you on-demand shows like Category 5, if you subscribe to shows like this. So. <laughs> Hello, it's yeah, perfect. For those nights that you can't make it, DWD. <laughs> for the times you just miss us, so... <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. I like that. I like it a lot. Um, okay. So I have another little something something here. All right. Coming at me from Cyber Smurf. Um, oh, I saw one of Eric's tweets and I wanted to see him perform when he was playing at Doc Malone's. And that's Place in Barry. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to drive that last 4,459 kilometers in time for the show. I'm sure Eric's performance was great nonetheless. So I was wondering if there was somewhere on the web where Cat5 fans can enjoy Eric's music. Hmm, that's kind of cool. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm sure Eric appreciated you uh, wanting to come that far to see him. And this is something that I've been saying to Eric for some time, is that you really need to get something up there. I'm looking here because I actually went to one of his gigs fairly recently mm -hmm. and had my iPod touch with me. And so I broadcast it on ah, on Ustream Live. Cool. How interesting. <laughs> Welcome to Ustream, where videos start uh -oh. automatically. I was we'll, like, what's we'll going on? You. There's a zoo. I brought up Ustream, and the <laughs> video suddenly began. That's really funny. So uh, let's try at Kid Eric. It doesn't, I, I don't know of a place, unfortunately. I wish that there was. Hmm. So what I would do is I would suggest that we petition Eric, yes. get onto Twitter, at yes. Kid Eric, and say, <laughs> look, man, we want to have videos of you. Robbie's got all the cameras. He's you got know, the goods. Go in there and, uh, and we'll, we'll get him to play you a song. Maybe we should just have him in one night. Eric, are you watching? Just come on in. Drive in. You can come on fill in in the last by. 10 minutes of the show with some... Irish music. Well, there's that one time he picked up the guitar randomly and it was just like, I don't even know. I forget what the song was about, but it was sitting in the corner. He just picks it up and he just did some sort of jazz like blues riff. He's pretty awesome. It was amazing. Really awesome. So, uh, okay, let's get on. Let's <laughs> get on there and uh, keep bugging the guy. So perhaps, just maybe, he will. Hound him. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that sounds good to me. Really good, I'd say. And we have another question. Oh, it's a two-part question. Oh. I don't know if we should save it. Okay. Do you want to save it till after the news? For after the news. We'll talk about the news, and then we'll come back with uh, our feature. We're going to be talking about PHP, and then if there's time, we will um, take the extra questions that, uh, that are coming to us. Get your questions in, <coughs> pardon me, by email, live at category5.tv. We would love to receive those. Also, you can uh, join us in the live chat room. We'd love to have you there. It's Category 5 on Freenode, or just visit our website. Mm -hmm. It's Category5.tv, and from there, you'll see the links on the Interact menu in order to get there in our chat room. So, All right. Well, Hill, take it away. Here are the top news stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. Free applications typically have built-in advertisements so developers can make money without having to charge for the initial app download. And a new study has found that these free mobile apps, due to the advertising they display from third-party advertisers, consume considerably more battery life than ad-free apps. Researchers used a special tool to monitor energy use by several apps on Android and Windows Phone hands heads handsets. <laughs> due to restrictions built into Apple's mobile operating system, the team was unable to run tests on the iPhone. Findings suggested that one case, 75% of an app's energy consumption was spent simply powering the advertisements. No way. That is wild. 
The research produced by a team at Purdue University in Indiana in the States looked at popular apps such as Angry Birds and Facebook. In the case of Angry Birds, research suggested that 20% of the total energy consumption was used to actually play the game itself. Of the rest, 45% is used finding your location uh, with which it can serve targeted advertising. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Pretty mental. Moving along, more than 26,000 people have downloaded an operating system which members of the anonymous hacker group claim to have created. The software is based on a version of Linux and comes outfitted with lots of websites, sniffing, and security tools. The official anonymous group has distanced itself from this software. The 1.5 gigabyte download is based on Ubuntu, one of the most popular versions of the Linux operating system. The software's creators say that they put it together for the education purposes to checking the security of web pages. It is asked that people not, oh, it asks people not to use it to destroy web pages. After much discussion and upon deciding that the distro is indeed a security threat, SourceForge removed it from their site saying, we have decided to take this download offline and suspend this project until we have more information that uh, might lead us to think differently. After which statement, the project's main website was updated to say, anonymous OS is not available anymore. And the author reiterates that the distro did not contain any Trojan or malware as accused. Apple has said that it will use its cash to start paying a dividend to shareholders and to buy back some of its shares. The technology giant said that it would pay a quarterly dividend of $2.65 per share from July. It will buy back up to $10 billion of its own shares starting with the company's next financial year, which begins on September 30th, 2012. At the end of last year, Apple revealed it had... Um, $97.6 billion in cash. My goodness. It expects to use $45 billion over the next three years. Um, this is the first time Apple has declared a dividend since 1995. And lastly, a British team featuring the current land speed record holder, Wing Commander Andy Green, is developing a car that will be capable of reaching 1,000 miles per hour, which is roughly 1,610 kilometers per hour. The Bloodhound supersonic car will be powered by a rocket bolted to a Eurofighter Typhoon jet engine and is expected to brutalize the current land speed record of 763.035 miles per hour, which Wing Commander Green achieved in 1997. Green says they are going for a cockpit-centered car, which means that almost everything can be controlled by him as the driver. He says, I'm not planning to control everything. I've already got plenty to do in a 10-mile run lasting 100 seconds. <laughs> Putting this that speed in perspective, traveling at 1,000 miles per hour, you could travel from Sacramento, California to Washington, D.C. in just more than two um, and a half hours, a trip that would typically take a car two days to do pretty wild you can get all of these stories online at category 5tv slash newsroom the category 5.tv newsroom is researched by roy w nash with contributions from our wonderful community of viewers if you have a news story you think's worthy of on-air mention send us an email at newsroom at category 5.tv from the category 5.tv newsroom i'm hillary rumble greg in texas is impressed because his car can do 75 miles an hour Ooh -wee. Wonderful. Pretty wild. <laughs> and it's legal now in Texas. Fantastic. That's all right. Thanks, Hillary. No problem. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric, the official electric company of Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find them online at corderyelectric.com. Also, gardengatefarms.com for certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. Visit gardengatefarms.com. This is Category 5 Technology TV. So nice to have you here. Nice to see so many familiar and friendly faces in the chat room. Mm -hmm. And uh, as always, it's nice to have Hillary Rumble joining oh, us tonight. thank you. It's lovely to be here. Hillary, we uh, started a series last week on PHP development. Mm -hmm. We're going to be working our way through uh, basically, you know, the, the basics to intermediate steps to being able to code your own software using cool. PHP, which is a web-based kind of tool. So you can build uh, a server-side program is what it's called. Mm. And it allows you to create websites that generate on the fly data and can ca you know you can create some really really cool stuff. So tonight we're going to be kind of backing up a little bit because last week we got started in arrays. 
Mm. But then I got quite a few questions, people saying, well, okay, well, I, I understand you got started in, in a raise and this and that, but um, what is dollar sign V? And why is dollar sign V <laughs> incrementing? And, and how, does, how do the mathematics of this work? So what we're going to do, as ever, when we're working on web stuff, we're going to go to demo.cat5.tv, which is already up to 11. So we're going to create 0, 12 Ooh. as the folder. So I'm just going to connect in here. And when I'm in there, <laughs> I'm going to create a folder called 0, 012. So if you follow along with me on the site, it's demo.cat5.tv slash, and now there is 012. I see it. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do here tonight is we're going to start by just kind of taking it back a little bit, and we're going to learn some of the mathematics behind PHP. So I'm going to create a file, which I'm going to call index.php, which is basically the, it's the file that, uh, that your Apache server, your, your web server is going to serve up at the directory level. So if I create that file, I'm going to drag it into there. So now, when you go to 012, the directory listing is gone, and it'll just be a blank page, because we haven't actually coded anything mm -hmm. into that page just yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm using FileZilla, which I love, the uh, client. I'm going to right-click on it and go Edit, Viewer Edit. In Linux, it's, it's great. OK, so we're going to start by opening our PHP tags, just like before. And we always close our tags. Anytime I create a tag, an opening tag, I always close it. If I'm in HTML and I do a div, I always start by closing my div. That way, when I get another div in here, and I, I don't end up forgetting, OK, well, which closing div is this, and which is this? And you notice my in indentation as well. It's important that you can follow your own code. So when I open a PHP command, I'm going to close it as well. Now we're going to create our first thing, and the first thing is going to be dollar sign $v equals 0. And dollar sign $v is just a string that holds the number. That can be dollar sign $d. That can be dollar sign number thing. <laughs> and just for the sake of the demonstration, let's, let's call it something silly like that. Let's, uh, we'll call it Hillary number. Yay. Yay, just to, to give you some, some props. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm honored. Oh, you're too kind. Stop. You have your own string named after ah, you. That's the nicest thing anyone said to me today. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay. You know what? I'm not going to do that just because it's so long, Hillary. Oh, fine. Okay, we're going to just use the R. So okay. we all know that it's Hillary number. Thank so you. So dollar sign R equals zero. So that's just, now it's assigned to zero. We've got to assign something to it. So now what happens if we go dollar sign R equals three? And then we're going to echo dollar sign R, which is basically saying, okay, print that to the screen. I want to see what R is equal to. So now if I upload that, refresh, you'll see the output of dollar sign $r is 3. Well, what happened to 1? What happened is this command here, dollar sign $r equals 3, has undone dollar sign $r equals 0. This one cannot exist because $r is now equal to 3. We've specified it statically. What if we instead say $r equals $r dollar sign $r plus 1? You can imagine just from simple mathematic uh, algebraic expressions, that's like saying if A is 1 and A equals A plus 1, right? It's the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So now we've got R equals 0, R equals R plus 1. Two commands in a row, and then an echo of that output. So we'll save that. You can imagine what that's going to equal simple mass mathematics as far as that goes, but the program says, okay, well, r is now equal to 1. We know that because r was originally 0, and then r, which is 0, equals r, which is 0, plus 1 mm -hmm. is 1. So the total is now 1. So if we went 5, then the value is going to be 5. But then if we again went r equals r plus 5, now r is 10. Make sense? Yes. This Algebra. Takes, takes me kinda, back to high school math. Yeah, it's, that's really kind of just kind of entry level. So I hope that, uh, that that makes sense. And feel free to message Hillary on, uh, on the chat room because mm -hmm. she is watching the chat window there. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go while, that is a, a PHP command for you, our first, our first one. While dollar sign $r is less than 10, and then open with a brace and close with a brace. Notice I always close. Okay. Echo. Well, first, let's do this. Watch this. Dollar sign $r equals dollar sign $r plus 1. So it's always going to increment by 1. So it starts out as 0 because of this command. And then this is saying basically, eh, keep looping until dollar sign $r is 10 or over because we've said a while it's less than 10. And the first thing that it does is add 1. So within this, if I go echo dollar sign $r dot and then br, this is basic PHP output. The dot means, okay, I'm echoing this first, and then I'm appending this, which is HTML for a, a line break. It's exactly the same as me saying that, but it saves some space in your code. Okay, Those spaces are not necessary. I like them for form. You always have to end your line in PHP with semicolon if it's the end of the statement. Notice here there's no semicolon because it's not the end of the statement. This is the end of this statement. This is the end of this statement. And the only place that it would be different is this closing brace here is in fact the end of the while statement, but it's a closing brace. So it does not require a semicolon. Okay, so let's save that. I'm going to get rid of this last echo R because we're echoing it basically 10 times nine times, I suppose. And you'll see, oh, 10 times. So we started as zero, but the why did zero not end up going out? Okay, I'm going to show you why. But first of all, look at that. We go one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. But we never said anything other than loop through that until it's 10. So you can see how that's working there. Small little bit of code, and we're able to output all that. And it is going to be valuable information to you. So if you think, well, I never need to out output a list that goes 1 to 10. There's, there's reasoning behind this. Hmm. Now watch this. R, dollar sign $R plus plus is exactly the same as saying dollar sign $R equals dollar sign $R plus 1. So once again, we're streamlining our code a little bit. There we go. Okay. So all I've changed is that. Once that's finished uploading, I'm going to refresh. And you'll see that the output is identical. There's no change. So the reason that we're not getting the zero, even though, guess what? R was zero. Why are we not getting our output as one or as zero? Where it's starting at one. And that's because during the while loop here, the first thing that happens is an increment. If we were to reverse this order, watch the difference here. Okay. Now we're outputting it before the increment takes place. And so it starts at 0 and ends at 9, because our initial value was 0. And it doesn't increment until it's already gone through the loop once. OK? So where this can be valuable is, of course, counting through your uh, arrays if you're using while loops. If you want to be able to, um, to output a certain amount of information from an array, uh, we're going to bring that all together uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, we're going to be talking about how we can bring these two kinds of processes together. Last week, we looked at for each, which loops through an array. This, the while statement, allows us to just simply count uh, in any direction, or it can do so much more than that but we're going to use this simple example to help you get started. Any questions so far in the chat room? Just, well, I had a question. I was wondering mm. why my name changed in the chat room, but I got filled in on that. Okay. But uh, nothing split. pertaining to um, PHP <laughs> at this current okay. point in time. Okay. I welcome your questions in the chat room. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take what we did last week, and we're going to say, Let's, let's use what we learned in, in arrays. So we're going to call this my array. And we'll just make the first key 0, and we'll call this title. Title 1. OK. Now remember, this was learned last week. So you can always watch last week's episode if you want to learn what it is that I'm doing here. My array 1 title. Notice that I've incremented the number manually there. Title 2. Okay, so I'm just using Title 1, Title 2 as an example. 
that array could be any amount of data. So now, while, let's say r is less than 2, this is going to, well, let's keep it real simple. I'm going to say, while r is less than 1, no, 2 is right. Okay, because we're going to count up from 0. Remember, r is 0, so it's going to go 1, 2. All right, so r plus plus. First thing we want to do is we want to go echo dollar sign my array dollar sign r. See how I'm assigning now to this value the value of dollar sign r, which is going to be counting up because we've got this r plus plus. Okay. Title. It's getting a little bit more sophisticated. We're going to add a carriage return there. Okay. So now, just to demonstrate on a simple two key array with that little bit of code, okay, that's going to output that array. Let's see. There you go. So we've got title one, title two. Well, that's not amazing to you because, <laughs> well, here's the thing is it's, it's all fine and good. I mean, it's just that amount of code, right? But what happens when, let's just, let's change this to, here we go. I'm going to change this to uh, a counter. Uh, well, let's just do this. Here we go. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm going to just count up here. I'm doing these counts manually just for the sake of keeping it real easy to follow as far as seeing it on the screen. Okay. So you see that? So this is a bigger array, and yet my output has never changed in its size. So that part has never changed. My database or my data info has gotten bigger. But the output itself is still this little tiny thing. And I'm going to relate that to you in just a moment so that you see how this can be beneficial in design. Here we go. Did I miss nine? Oh, people are saying, yeah, you missed nine. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, yeah, I did. But it's ten. There we go. Nine. <laughs> I <laughs> simply did that. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. <laughs> On this week's episode. There you go. Counting to ten. Just kidding. Okay, so now because zero was my first one, here we go. That actually needs to be 10 because I'm outputting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is 10. There we are. Okay? So here's where it counts. Here's where it matters is when it comes to formatting. Watch what we can do here. Imagine if you had created a beautified output for this information, in which case we wanted to take that, let's say this was a massive page of data or content. And we wanted to make this look pretty, but we don't want to have to go through all this content because if we had put this in statically, it would be a lot of work to do that. Because it's in this way, all I have to do is format this little tiny bit here. Let's say we want to make it all bold. So now, as simple as that, with eight little, nine little keystrokes, everything is outputted as bold. We can, we can change that as far as, you know, what you want to do there, but you can do all your formatting within this simple echo statement because basically during the loop, everything is going to be output using this statement here. So that's very basic counting in PHP. I hope that uh, that, that kind of helps you to, to learn and, and that you can relate that back to last week's episode where we were counting through the dollar sign V string. Here we're using dollar sign $R just so that I can show you that it really doesn't matter what you call it as long as the name that you use is not already a PHP function or object because you don't want to overwrite it. So create something like my string or my counter. Hmm. You couldn't say count because count is a function. So you would say dollar sign counter, for example. How would you make the word title bold and not the numbers bold? The word title. Okay, well, mm -hmm. in this case, because... That's getting into some different PHP, but in this case, because we know it's title one, title two, title, etc., we would go dollar sign 
temp say tmp equals explode bracket space because we know it's always a space that's after the word title or we could use title even let's say title comma uh no dollar sign my uh my array dollar sign r okay so what i'm telling it is well let's make it real simple i'm going to make that a space just so that it makes the most sense to you in that what's going to happen is temp is going to become an array where space is the divider so zero is going to be title one is going to be the number so if i take that now and i go dollar sign temp and notice i've made a mistake here because i forgot to put title so temp zero is going to be title, the word title, space, because I removed the space in the process of exploding it, dollar sign temp one. Okay. Now, just after this, I want to go unset dollar sign temp because I'm done with it. That removes its value from memory and it also prevents you from accidentally reusing the value in a future uh, run. So if I'm right here, TMP becomes an explosion of my array dollar sign R title at the space character. And there you are. Ah, cool. Okay. A. Jameson was asking that in the chat room, so oh, I'm thanks. glad we cleared that up. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, explode, look it up on php.net great place to learn about functions with regards to PHP and uh, explode is the command to break something at a particular point it can be very very handy and maybe we'll get into that later on in the series sounds good to me thanks everybody thank you Robbie this is category 5 technology TV and our website is www.category5.tv make sure you follow us on Twitter as well we'd love to have you follow us category 5 TV for uh, for the show at Robbie Ferguson at Hillary Rumble yeah gotta tweet that I'll tweet it. Send us your tweets, your thoughts, your hellos, all that jazz. Yeah. Your we questions. Love to hear from you. And we got questions. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. There was a question there with regards to last week's. And it was in, I think it came by email. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, uh, with yeah. regards to last week's feature, as we're kind of talking about PHP right now. Is that the last uh, one that you have? This one I have is about VirtualBox. Can you scroll down in the top column there? I Whoops. changed your monitor too, so. Uh, oh, I didn't realize. My bad. New hardware. I know. Sorry, guys. I'm just getting used to the new. And if we're unable to get you, get to your question goods. tonight, I, as Hillary will tell you, I mean, she's <laughs> scrolling down through this list of <laughs> massive amount of questions, and, and we appreciate your questions so much. We do. We do our best mm -hmm. to, to, to field all of the questions if we can. Sometimes it's not always possible, but uh, do know that we've... we've hopefully received your question now <laughs> if for some reason you haven't heard from us within about two or three weeks then maybe we haven't got your email but definitely yeah. you know we do our best to try i think this is it um okay possibly bash and pearl programming is that it okay yes that sounds With the, good the dollar gary, images yes gary posted this as a comment on episode number 234 last week Yes. Thanks, okay. Gary. What he goes on to say is, I have little experience with Bash and Perl programming in Linux and VB programming in Windows, so I'm familiar with the concept of arrays. I can't quite wrap my head around the syntax you're using above, though. And what he puts here is dollar sign images, um, square bracket dollar sign v, square bracket file. Um, okay. equals images three dot jpeg. Right. Uh, I'd be more used to seeing something like this: dollar sign images. Square bracket dollar sign v equals images three right. dot jpeg. I'll, I'll oh. help translate that. Sure. In just a moment. What is missing? He says, what does the the square brackets with the word file portion of the syntax? Okay. What does that refer to? That's the particular question. So maybe once you can see visually what he is yeah. saying, that would okay make more sense. Erica, can you give me uh, uh, just any object that I could make into a, like a spreadsheet or something, like? Anything at all. Like I would say, apple? Uh, no, like, like a, yeah, a big apple. An apple. Okay, mm -hmm. Erica says apple. An apple. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. Thank you, Erica. Uh, I'm going to use that to 
to create hmm. an analogy for you here. Okay. Okay. So what what he's saying here is that okay, we've gone and used dollar sign images dollar sign v and then file yes. equals whatever dot jpg. Okay? But he's saying, well, why are you not just going dollar sign images dollar sign v equals, equals whatever yeah. dot jpg. Okay? Why are we using this? What is this? is what the question is. Mm -hmm. So using the example that Erica has provided us so kindly, I'll, I'll say, okay, let's say we we're going to use Apple. So we're going to say, okay, food. Okay? So let's start with that. Food, and we're going to go, let's use bullet points. And we're going to say vegetable. And I'm going to indent that. And I'm going to say... Name, give me some vegetables. Let's use root vegetables to start. Potato. <laughs> carrot. Beet. All right. Beets. Yes. One more vegetable in the chat room. Uh, uh, vegetables that grow in the ground. Onion. Onion. Wonderful. Okay. So that's vegetable. Let's go up one level. And we're going to say, okay, fruit. And here we go. With our bullet points, we're going to say... Banana, apple, there's our magical apple. Yeah. And one more fruit. Cherries. Cherry. Sound good? Okay. So there is our list of food. Okay. So what I'm going to show you here is dollar sign food, vegetable. Okay. Equals potato right no see here in this case what's going to happen is if I we learned this tonight with our mathematics then create vegetable is carrot I've now overwritten potato hmm. and we've lost that in our in our array so in this case it's a little backwards from images because in images we've gone this route and said dollar sign V, which is zero or one or two or three. So in this case, because we're counting up the way that I've structured this, I'm going to put that counter right here and say dollar sign V. But it has the same effect. Dollar sign V equals zero. Okay? Dollar sign V plus plus. We're counting up. We learned to count today. So now here, we're going to go dollar sign V again. Carrot dollar sign V plus plus. And we keep going through our list like that so that now when this is output, food, vegetable, dollar sign V, which is like this, zero, one, two, three. Okay. So now if I want a potato, I can go echo dollar sign food, vegetable, and potato is going to be zero. And that, from my array, will output potato. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll actually include this little, little diagram. silly diagram as, a, I guess, an ODF file <laughs> for you on the show notes of episode number uh, 235. 235. 235. Unreal. Very cool. Thanks so much for the question. Thank you, everybody, for your questions mm -hmm. tonight and for joining us. Still want to receive your postcards. Love receiving them. Thank you to everybody who sent them in. Yes, that would be fabulous to get your postcards, get your tweets, get your viewer testimonials, get your All questions. All these ways to interact. We love hearing from you. Hillary, next week it. I'm very excited for. We're going to be taking viewers for a tour of the studio here what? at Category 5. I know. So oh, if, you've ever want to see, if you've ever wanted to see how things work here at Category 5 Technology TV mm. behind the scenes, beyond just Backstage Pass, I mean, you who are watching Backstage Pass, hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ignoring you, but hello, I'm just saying hello, hello, hello to hello, them. Hello. The thing is, is that you've only seen this kind of area. We're going to take you through the whole studio and the way that it works. We're going to yes. show you Wirecast. We're going to show you how to use Wirecast with three HD video cameras, how to get cool. 720p recording with a tw uh, t uh, 1080p source and be able to zoom in digitally without any loss of data quality. 
Sounds good to me. Yep. So uh, make sure you join us next week. And there is a kicker. What's that? I got a free copy of Wirecast for you. Unbelievable. Can I win it? You can't win it. Why not? It's in the rules and regulations. <laughs> Sorry. Well. But you, you can. can potentially win it, Jot. I mean, chat room. Anyone could. Anyone could. So don't miss next week, episode number 236. Hard to believe we're just creeping up towards our fifth anniversary. Hillary, great to see you. Um, Thank you. I also should mention that Erica, who is here with us tonight. Hi, hi, Erica. Erica. Maybe you could wave to the people on Backstage Pass they if you stand over the here. They can see the camera. Um, they can see they you can from see right there. there. So, yeah, just wave. She's yeah. Uh, Erica friend. is going to be joining us uh, for the first time next week. She's uh, an intern who is joining us uh, tonight and going to be working with us over the next little while. So it's nice to have you here, and uh, and we'll certainly enjoy having her on the air next week uh, for that special feature as we take you for a tour through the studio. So, Hillary, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye, we'll talk to you everyone. next Tuesday night, same time. Bye-bye.